The Box Seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Woodland Stud, Brecon Farms, New Zealand Bloodstock Standard Bread, Stonewall Stud, The Clubs, Alexandra Park, Cambridge, Addington and Ashburton, Garrard's Horse and Hound, and IRT. It's your horse and our passion. Hi everyone, welcome into another edition of your box seat and a big thank you to our stable of sponsors, Michael Guerin. A whole lot to talk about as we build towards a really interesting carnival about to unfold at Addington Raceway. Yeah, the separation between the two carnivals, Greg, as I say good morning or good evening depending what time you're watching to you and all our viewers at home. Separations between the two carnivals is going to be interesting. Auckland's finished their carnival and that backed on pretty much to the other carnival at Christmas New Year. How many of the horses there justified a trip to the South Island is going to be interesting. We heard last week that copy that may not be heading to the Easter Cup. How many of the trotters go down to take on Sunday Sun? How many of the three-year-olds are good enough to go down. Greg, going to be really interesting to see how that unfolds because obviously we have another carnival up here and the jewels up here in the north. So the attitude of the northern trainers to heading south will be interesting, but what I'm looking forward to today is two in-depth exclusive interviews you have taken care of, Hayden Cullen and Nathan Williamson, two of the bright young stars of harness racing. Looking forward, Gregory, to hearing where they're at and where they want to go. Yeah, you'll hear that in the first half of the show. Before we get into those, Michael, thought it was an opportune time with a little bit of a quieter time in the game to uh, have a discussion around exports and where some of these horses uh, have gone or which ones have gone, Michael. And I know when the All-Stars team were firing up, a lot of people used the excuse that these horses had to be sold because it was getting more difficult for them, but um, they're no longer in operation. Culling Racing's there now, and yet there's still this number of horses, and, and we've picked out um, the, you know, the top level of them, if you like. Um, there's still a large number gone since the start of the season. There is. Um, it was a strange time in the last four or five years because every perceived ill in harness racing was blamed on Mark Purden and, and Natalie Rasmussen. There was, everybody was selling their horses because they couldn't compete with them and the handicapping system was no good because it didn't work for them and they, they just got blamed for everything. And yet you look at this list and bad to the bone on this list will be a horse who does come back. He hasn't been exported, he's popped overseas and will return home. The rest of them um, won't be coming home. And you look at that list, Greg, and you go, that seems even more busy than usual. And that's probably the case. Now, there's a variety of reasons for that, but it's good to break that myth, first of all, the bullshit myth, that it was the All-Stars' fault and people couldn't compete with them because all those horses have gone since Hayden Cullen took over a stable which is no longer called the All-Stars. I think it's a double-edged sword. I would like those horses to be retained here, but let's be blatantly honest. You and I owned a horse with Sir Peter Valor and, and Andrew and Daniel called Nevada. He wasn't good enough for what we wanted. He'll be good enough for somebody else. And we sold him. And the day we purchased him at the sales, like almost everybody who purchases a horse at the sales in New Zealand, or even breeds a horse, we knew that if we didn't get him to be a derby winning type horse, which is what we wanted, then we could sell him. And everybody who goes to the sales thinks to themselves, well, I'm going to buy this thing here, and if it doesn't work out or he's not quite the horse I wanted, well, I have Perth and Melbourne and Canada and America. So there's no point us living this dream of buying horses that we can eventually sell to Gary Hall Senior if when people sell them, we all get upset about it, Greg. So... It's, it's an unusual dynamic. I realise we've gutted a lot of horses we know out of the system, Mark Shard and Star Galleria. And I fully believe we should have more free-for-all racing. That also means that trainers have to accept for these races because for a long time, trainers have pointed the finger at harness racing New Zealand or the clubs, and then they just don't accept for races. And we should have a handicapping system where horses can maybe move around a bit better. But most of the horses on that list, Greg, we're probably between rating 90 and rating 120. They're going to race each other all the time anyway. So I'm, I'm not sure the handicapping system's at fault. I think programming would be good if we had more guaranteed free-for-alls, but Addington and Alexandra Park have tried those plenty of times and not got them off the ground. I do think Alexandra Park needs to be more definitive in giving the best horse who accepts for every meeting a start rather than giving the worst horse who accepts for every meeting a start. I think that's a clear mistake. 
and I think that needs to be addressed. But there also needs to be some reality about this because we've sold a horse, plenty of people watching the show have sold horses. We are a trading marketplace and a lot of these horses are gonna be traded because if you own I'm Another Masterpiece or a Star Galleria, there's only three pockets you can race in in New Zealand. You can race in the Northern Pocket, which is predominantly Alexander Park, sometimes Cambridge. You can race at Canterbury, in Canterbury, or you can race in the Deep South, and we'll see some of those races shortly, Gregory. That same horse, we'll use Star Galleria, for example, uh, or Nandolo, can go to Perth and race not just at Gloucester Park. It can race in other parts of WA. It can go to Melton, but race in provincial Victoria. It can go to Menangle, but also race in provincial Bathurst and Newcastle. So there's so many more different outlets, Greg. And while a horse being winning 50,000 a season may not mean much to us, if it races at Bathurst and it wins six races a year at Bathurst, and I live in Bathurst, it probably does mean something to me. So different horses have different uses to different people. So I think it's a very complex model, very easy to blame harness racing in New Zealand, very easy to blame the all-stars, very easy to blame the clubs, very easy to blame everybody. But the bottom line is, the day you buy a horse in this country, Greg, or for me anyway, and you were part of the experience with Nevada, you do so hoping and thinking there'll be an export market for it somewhere. If you decide to later feed that export market, or somebody else does, I don't think we can complain about it because we'd be awfully complaining, Greg, if there was nowhere to sell these horses. Yeah, exactly. And it is the lifeblood for so many of our trainers, the 10% that they get if they sell a horse for, uh, although it's not a written rule, we know that that is basically what happens when they do uh, sell a horse on behalf of an owner. So um, a lot of the cream, if you like, for the trainers out there so uh, comes via. What would via you sales. do, Greg? Like you, you've worked for racing clubs, so you've been in the office there where Brian Rabbit does the fields yep. at Addington. What would you do? Because I used to think it was as easy as let's give them a free-for-all so they can race every second week. Yep. And Addington sort of makes that work as best they can. But I think I, it's I'm, easier, I'm not, I'm not Michael. sure everybody wants to accept for these races because no. plenty of horses don't seem to turn up. No, they don't. But I, I think it's easier if you were racing absolutely every week and you could share the love if you like. So one week it would be more of a challenge for your horse, say, starting off 40 metres, but then there's a free-for-all mobile the next week. And I think that's what Australia has over us, that variety and the fact that they race every week. There's very few weeks that Melton or Menangle don't race, whereas Addington's not racing every Absolutely every week, although these days it is is most weeks. So I think it's definitely a challenge. It's definitely worth having a discussion, maybe with some other industry personnel to see well, what they would a, do. A key factor, Greg, is people blame the rating system, but the horses in that bunch there predominantly have nothing to do with the rating system. No, they don't. No. They got to 90, and once you're at 90, you're between 90 and 120 in your open class. Yeah. So, and if you lose three points every time you lose, to get far enough down for it to matter, you've got to lose eight or ten races. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's why these horses are being sold, Michael, because the owner's not prepared to pay for two or three months to get back to a level where he can win another race. And you can totally understand that. Yeah, but also, you talk about Menangle. I do a lot of form work for New South Wales. Most of those horses race every week. Yeah. When they're racing, they race every week. But if we're going to race our horses on a two-week cycle, which is how most people here like to train, they race in two-week cycles, yep. and then we give them a four-month break in the middle of winter. Hmm. That winter period at Alexandra Park is incredibly vibrant, and plenty of horses have won thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Yeah, the stakes but, don't go down. Exactly. And the other thing is the Australians don't have the export market. Yes, they export to America. I agree with that. But hmm. they don't really have, they have an internal export market where horses from Victoria go to WA. But the 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 gap between our best and their best is getting so much bigger, apart from an angle where Luke McCarthy trains. Like, uh, horses from New Zealand can go across there and it's like they've grown another league. So if that's where the horse's use lies, then it's not that big a deal for me it being exported. The other side to that too is, horses like Kango and Christians Have Time and Pembroke Playboy are coming through and they're going to fill those gaps. So it's just the cycle of life for me. Yes, I would like to see half those horses retained. Half of them can go, there's no issues. But we also need to be realistic about the fact that these are people who are paying bills, and if you're not getting enough money back, or if you want to go to the yearling sales and play again, you have to get rid of a couple of horses. I've been to the stage, Greg, where I was paying $14,000 a month in training bills, and it's not much fun. 
So we can't be critical of people for sending their horses overseas because not every horse suits every purpose. I want to win derbies and size stakes, Greg. And if I can't do that, I don't really have a lot of use for horses. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting discussion, and I'm sure that we can uh, let that evolve a wee bit and maybe talk to some others uh, down the track. You spoke about Nathan Williamson uh, before. I had an opportunity yesterday to catch up with him and talk all things around his stable, which at the moment is flying. It's uh, a pretty interesting conversation with a lead towards Addington Raceway. Well, the Nathan Williamson stable is certainly one in form. Great uh, for you to find the time to have a chat to us on the box seat. Uh, Nathan, congratulations on the way the season's going. You must be wrapped. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Um, yeah, absolutely thrilled um, with the way things are going. And, uh, yeah, long may it continue, really. We saw a bit of a, a, a rare moment on Saturday for you. You picked up an Invercargill Cup with Pembroke Playboy, but now you've got yourself a Northern Southland Cup. These, these local cups are pretty special, aren't they? Yeah, they, yeah, they really are, Greg. Like, um, you know, to win a, um, you know, a, a cup on your home turf is pretty special, and um, you know, um, obviously a great thrill. Obviously, the Invercargill one was a great thrill, and then the Northern Southland one just, um, you know, really capped off, a, you know, what's been a great season for the horse. And um, yeah, as I say, he's still got a few more features coming up, so let's hope he can carry on. Nathan, he took his career earnings past $100,000 for his owner, Chris Orcock. And his story around this horse is a pretty special one as well. His late wife, Colleen, suggested that it was time he got himself a horse and a bit of enjoyment in life. And um, he's certainly having some fun. Yeah, absolutely. A great thrill for Chris. And, um, you know, a fellow just, just turned up um, at the stables one day and just said, look, I'm, I'd like you to go and buy me a horse at the sales. And... Um, as you know, the sales, there's a lot of horses there, but we managed to pick out a, a fairly decent one. And um, no, it's just been great. He's a great fella and a great owner and uh, never, um, you know, questions anything we've done with the horse. And, um, you know, we're reaping the benefit now. So it's, um, no, it's been a great story. Nate, you've really plotted a path with him. You've, you've picked your targets and, and thus far you, you're picking them off quite nicely. Thanks very much. You took down the, the cup winner at Addington, which I know was a big thrill for you, but uh, having won these two cups now in, in your own town, you're going to make your way to Addington Raceway and take on a serious uh, Brecon Farms Easter Cup field, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. It's just all, as you say, just plotting a path for him. Like, um, yeah, we're just um, sort of, you know, perhaps taking them on over the sprint trips thus far. So it's going to be a big step up over the, you know, the extreme distance of 20, uh, 3,200 at Addington. But um we're confident he can, um, you know, measure up anyway. So we'll give him his opportunity. And, um, you know, obviously um, with an eye to the to the really big race in November, um, with another six or so months on him, um, we think he might be better then too. So, um, no, whatever he does on, you know, um, Saturday fortnight, we'll be um, looking forward to coming back again and having another crack later in the year. Let's go back to the Oldhurst Hotel Northern Southland Cup, and, and you may collect to uh, as a bit of a southern icon as well, as well we, we well know. Um, he came up very quickly at a crucial part of the race, so quickly, in fact, that you guys locked wheels. Um, that could have gone either way, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was just, um, I was following Dad and Dave, and he was just sort of coming back on me a little at that stage, and um, Kirsten's horse is so fast when she come out, um, I went to go and I was almost coming out ahead of her and by the time I'd got him out, um, she was right beside me, you know. So, um, yeah, we locked wheels there momentarily, but, um, yeah, between me and Kirsten, we sort of uh, unlocked and, um, yeah, then, then it was all on then. But, no, look, um, you know, he's a great horse and, um, you know, it's great for Southland to have um, so many nice open-class horses um, down there at the moment. Your guy exploded away, very good closing sectionals. He must have come through the race well because you've decided that your lead-up to that Easter Cup now will come this week in the Winton Businesses Cup, again, off 40 metres. So it won't be easy against basically the same field. Yeah, that's right, Greg. Um, look, I, I've put him in, obviously, the nominations and the field we're out on Monday. So it'll just depend how he is through the week, whether we do race. Um, but if I'm happy with him, he will. Um, it'll just be, um, he seems to have recovered really well, but um, he hasn't had um, any track work yet as far as he's had jog work, but no um, fast work. So when he has a fast run later in the week, I'll be able to assess um, where I think he is and whether I think he, um, you know, he needs this race this week or whether I just wait and perhaps trial him the following week ahead of the Easter Cup. But um, 
yeah, look, if he goes around, um, you know, I'm sure he'll go well because, um, you know, well, he always does. But I think, um, yeah, a lot will just depend on how he is during the week, whether he does front up on Saturday or not. That's one of your stable stars, one that's not going to be with you forever, has got a big campaign in his next three starts. His name is Regazzo Mack. And since he was defeated at Addington Raceway, You've spun him around at a couple of trials. The first one, nice and quiet. Talk me through the second one. It was clearly a step up. Yeah, that's right, Greg. I just wanted to give him two trials. Basically, just um, track work with, um, you know, going a little bit quicker, obviously, and just, you know, taking him, um, you know, away from home. So first one was very quiet. The second one, um, I just wanted to let him run off the mobile a little bit, something that um, you may have noticed he's never done before. And it's just been, it's sort of been the plan all the way is just to get him to sort of relax and come back to me and then um, work into his races later. But um, obviously with some features coming up, he's probably going to need to, um, you know, especially if he draws well, um, leave the mobile and he, you know, as I expected, he done that great. He showed um, good gate speed and then he, um, Obviously finished off great as well. So I was really pleased with him. He's really forward. Um, he does improve with racing, but he's as good as I can have him going into Friday night, really. Okay, he's got barrier nine again, uh, courtesy of the pref barrier draw. And you've got a, a couple of speedy ones drawn to your inside, including Pace and Pride, who must have impressed you last time. So at what point percentage-wise would you have him going into this Friday night, the end of some classic? Yeah, look, he's pretty, he's, he's at his top. He's as good as I could probably have him without the benefit of a race. I do think um, whatever he does on Friday, I think he'll continue to get better. Um, and the plan is obviously to have him at his at his peak for the derby, which is three weeks' time. But um, he's done a lot of work and, I'm, you know, we've given him obviously the two trials just to have him um, really ready for that. So, no, look, um, as you know, you can't come to Addington um, in need of the run. So we're, we're pretty ready and... Um, I'm sure he'll, um, you know, he'll be really hard to beat. The small field, um, as you know, sometimes can be a little bit tricky, but um, he might have to do a bit of work, but I think he's capable. The Vero, obviously, next week, and then the Derby uh, a fortnight after that. Uh, the 2,600 metres, he appears to be a very good stayer. That must be uh, part of the excitement for you. Yeah, definitely, Greg. I think he, he'll re you'll really see his best when he gets out over those longer trips. He's just got such a great attitude and such a great um, willpower, if you like, to um, you know to really you know want to find the line and 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 um, you know he seems like he'll um, really relish the trip. So we're really looking forward to the yeah the longer distance with him, and um, you know I, I'm sure he'll be um, you know right up there come uh, Derby night. Are you surprised he's equal favourite with the Northern Derby, Victor and Crook? Well, I am a little bit, but in saying that, I'm, I'm pleased he is. I'm pleased other people have that opinion of him. But, um, look, he's a very serious horse, Greg, and I am very excited about the Derby. Um, look, you know, I'm, I'm under no illusions. I know how hard those races are and how good those horses are too, but um, he is pretty special. So um, it's going to be exciting three weeks. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you at Addington on Friday night and with the progress of this horse through to the Diamond Creek uh, Derby. Another runner you've got resuming on Saturday, Chinese uh, Whispers. What about the prep wise there? Had a look at those two trials, nice and quiet, uh, not hooked out last time, uh, or might have been the first time, but how's, how's the progress there? Yeah, no, he's really good. Um, look, I, I had him nominated last week um, for the, um, the Southern Lights down home, and I just felt um, just where he was fitness wise that I just felt he'd be better with another week's training under him. Um, he tried lovely, but he's just he's just one of those horses. I was pleased I wasn't in, in retrospect. They run a hard time, and he would have um, perhaps um, needed that run. So I'm happy with his track work this week. And, um, you know, obviously the strength of the field probably isn't what it was last week either. So pretty happy with him, although 40 metres does make it um, pretty difficult over those, you know, short of trips. He's probably going to have to come with one last run at them, but he is very fast. So um, I'd like to think he'll... Um, you know, he'll run in four, but whatever he does, he will improve in. All right, so he goes around in race number nine. Is this a precursor to coming to Addington with him as well? Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, just probably more the intermediate grades of a handicap for him. I just think he's very talented. He's good enough to be competitive with the best ones. He's just, um, he's light on experience. And I just think um, the trip away and, um, you know, running in some of those intermediate grades is probably where he's at at the moment. And then um, obviously, you know, in the springtime, hopefully we can, um, you know, target some of those better races with them, you know. 
won you had success with on Saturday, sitting in the bike for Craig Ferguson with Nutcracker. How big a thrill for you? Uh, Craig's done a pretty good job as a trainer, and he's had over 30 winners already in a, a very short career, but for you to be able to steer one home for him, like he has been for you recently with Dark Horse, particularly his first group race, how special? Oh, look, Greg, it was real special. You know, um, Craig, you know, champion bloke, and, um, you know, he's doing a good job with the, um, you know, the small team that he's got. So, um, yeah, managed to give him a couple of wins with um, Dark Horse over the last um, sort of couple of months, um, you know, due to him being up in Christchurch when I wasn't and um, obviously um, filling in the other day. But, um, no, I was absolutely wrapped to, to win a race like that for him. And, um, you know, um, yeah, as I say, a, a young fella that probably um, with some more opportunities could, um, you know, could obviously do great things, but he's just, um, no, absolutely wrapped for him, and uh, no, it was a big thrill. I'll tell you what, Nathan, she was good, nutcracker. She couldn't have gone any better. No, really nice filly. I was really impressed. She um, worked at both ends, and she showed, a, you know, a real bit of maturity there. Um, you know, two-year-old having her first start, she was pretty prof- uh, professional, so, um, you know, that goes to show what a good job Craig had done with her, and um, no, she was right up to the mark on the day. All right, he was at his mate uh, Rory McCall's wedding, I think it was. So uh, I'm sure he had a whole lot of fun and, and plenty of other reasons to celebrate. I think it's a half to Yura Kobe, who's a race rival for um, Ragazzo Mac on Friday night. So there's a bit of breeding there too to go on with it. And the job that Craig's done with Smoke and Bandar coming up to Addington Raceway pretty much just turns up and, and wins when he likes there. So uh, he knows his way around a horse, doesn't he? Absolutely. I mean, he's, yeah, no, he's done a super job with that horse as well. And, uh, you know, one of probably many trainers throughout the country, if they, you know, they just need those quality horses. And once they get them, they can do a great job with them. So, um, you know, real rap that, uh, you know, Craig's um, having such a great season. Back to your own team, Dark Horse, beaten by one Apollo. One Apollo actually won that race at the start, the Southern Lights, uh, and gave Jared O'Reilly his 599th winner. So he's honing in on a milestone, but uh, she was still pretty good. Oh, she was super, Greg. Like she trotted 323, which I think uh, might be a New Zealand record. So, I mean, you know, she's sort of, uh, she's gone right up to her best form. Um, as you say, the race was probably, um, you know, pretty difficult for her after the first, you know, sort of 300 metres. I was giving that good horse a, a good head start. And um, although she probably made up sort of 10 or 12 lengths on him in the last sort of two rounds, it wasn't um, wasn't enough to beat him, you know. So he's a very good horse on his day too. So, um but no, we're looking forward to having a crack at some of those other races now. So, um, yeah, let's hope she can hold that form. All right, we find you at the Awamaru Trials. You're on the road uh, as per the norm, but um, how'd you go today? You had some qualifiers? Yeah, two qualifiers today. Um, uh, two qualifying paces. They both qualified and both went nice. So, no, mission accomplished as far as that trip was concerned. So, um, yeah, no, just um, with me being away the next few Fridays, we just couldn't qualify them at home. So, um he had to come on the road today, but um, no, more than happy. Well, State Highway 1's going to get a hammering from you over the next month. Um, I know that part of it's not the most glamorous, but when you've got the quality of horse you've got at the moment, Nathan, uh, I'm sure it, it, it eases the pain, if you like. But uh, again, congrats on the way you've got the team going. Uh, you've got them exactly where you want to have them going into a carnival like this. And uh, I'm sure that you and your staff and, and the whole Williamson family really looking forward to this. Yeah, absolutely, Greg, and uh, yeah, no, we are, and uh, no, it's starting a few weeks, so, um, you know, really looking forward to it, and uh, no, thanks for, you know, um, you know, um, letting me join the show. Cheers. No, really appreciate your time, Nathan, all the best. Cheers, mate, thank you. So, Michael, that was a great insight from Nathan as to his horses, in particular coming to the Easter Carnival at Addington and obviously this Friday night where Regazzo Mac resumes at Addington. It feels like a resuming because he hasn't raced for a month or so, but, uh, geez, he's a very exciting three-year-old. He is, and Nathan's an exciting young talent. My views on where he could potentially end up as a trainer are well known. I know Nathan got given a hard time when he was said back in January he could end up being the best trainer of the country. Uh, that's that's with the caveat, of course, that Mark Purden doesn't come back to training and, and there's a lot of trainers who are probably in their 50s to 60s, Greg, who in 10 years may not be training at the same capacity they are. I think there's a really good wave of young trainers coming through in Canterbury and Auckland and Anna Donnelly and Waikato is doing a super job and many others. So I, I think it's a really interesting time for all of those young trainers, Greg, about how they approach it 
key how their communication skills are with their owners because people don't want to buy a horse and not hear about it for a year anymore and how they go about strategically planning to become part of the big carnivals on both sides of the Tasman Creek. No one's saying it's easy, it's not easy. But I, I, think it's, I think the challenge is there and the age of our leading trainers has got to the stage, Greg, where there is a significant generational gap and who chooses to fill that gap will come down to initiative, hard work and of course opportunity. Yeah, and obviously Craig Ferguson uh, with Nutcracker winning his first stakes race at the weekend. Um, some of the other milestones we've just had, Michael, 250 wins at Ascot Park for Murray Brown with Quaddy VC. That's that's a huge effort from him. And Brent Mangos trained his 400th winner at Manawatu on Tuesday in Nita Margarita. And I think Tracy Kabbalah had her first training success, so congratulations to Tracy, that's a big deal. Well done to Mango at 400 and... Murray Brown, who's one of the institutions of Southland Harness Racing, Greg, and a hell of a good fella. Well done to you, Murray. It's an enormous number, 250. Thank you to Jason Broad for passing that on to us. But huge, huge number, Greg, on one racetrack. And I can't think of a time when Southland Harness Racing was going around when I didn't see Murray's name in the race book. No, that's right. He's had some terrific horses uh, over the years. The one that stands out for me, Bodine Bad Babe, who, of course, uh, won herself a harness jewels. We're about to take a short break here on your box seat. On the other side, had an opportunity to head out to Cullen Racing on Monday and get an update from uh, Hayden Cullen, including where all his stars are going and his new set of colours. <laughs> Hayden, it's late in the afternoon, and as I've seen, things are pretty busy around here. Yeah, they are, Greg. Yeah, we're, we're heating up at the moment. We've got quite a few trialling up and um, a lot racing this week too. You're coming up to three months into the role. What were your expectations? Has it been exceeded, or have you found it a bit tougher than you thought? Oh, it's definitely been tough, Greg. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to be a big job, but um, yeah, just, just all those little things behind the scenes, you know, that you, you don't really see. And um, now that I have to do myself, um, yeah, it, it is a big job. 60-odd winners you had. I think it was 62 when you were training with Brent Mangos. What did you bring from that experience to here? And then obviously what you'd learnt from Mark and Natalie in your time here. Yeah, look, uh, Brent, he's a great great horseman, you know. Uh, he's trained a lot of great horses too. Um, you know, he's um, just, just kind on the horses and, and just getting to learn how the, how the horses need to be worked. Um, I sort of brought that here and, and Mark and Natalie are a lot the same like that as well. What about in terms of since the 1st of January? Has a lot changed? Do you do things differently? Are you sort of setting your own pathway, if you like? I kind of, Greg, you know, um, my, my, I try to keep it as the same as Mark and Nat as possible, but, um, you know, everyone's got their little little traits they put in as well, and it's, it's never going to be exactly the same, but, um, you know, we, we try to run the ship pretty much pretty much the same. What about numbers-wise, uh, Hayden? We'll touch on a couple of horses shortly with regards to that, but where are you at, and, and are the numbers what you thought they'd be? Yep, no, the numbers are hanging in there really well, Greg. Yeah, we, we're sitting on about 40-odd horses at the moment, and, um, yeah, most of them all race horses too. A lot are going to trial. We're doing this on a Monday tomorrow and then obviously into the carnival at Addington Raceway. Things are really starting to heat up with some of your stars. Yeah, they are. That's right. Um, we've got Spangham and South Assured and Amazing Dream. They're, they're stepping out tomorrow, so um, it's pretty exciting to get them back on the track too. For most, it would be exciting to take them to the trials, let alone to race day, but I guess that comes with a fair bit of pressure too. Oh, it does, you know. Yeah, this whole job comes with pressure, you know. It's, so, it's sort of one thing I'm starting to deal with now, you know. Um, it's never going to go away, but um, you just got to deal with it the best you can. For you and Amanda, what, what's changed in your life? I, I'm picking uh, family time, special time now. Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. Look, um, we've got a wee daughter, you know, and, um, you know, it's, we don't really get to see as much as we like, but, um, you know, this is a big focus, you know, and we've got to do the job right here, but um, every every chance we get, we, we spend it with Ava. Yeah, and not that any family time is not special, but you know what I mean. It, it's probably less at the moment, and, and eventually I guess you're going to want more. Is there an expectation that you will get some of that further down the track? I think so, Greg, yeah. Look, look until the jewels, you know, um, we've got big 
times ahead and, and we've really got to knuckle down and focus on what we're doing and um, and get the job done at hand. And, and make it work because that's ultimately what you're here to do. Yeah, that's definitely right. Yeah. Let's talk about some of these horses. You got a couple of Group 2 successes early on, Amazing Dream and Better Twist. You had a bit of Group 1 uh, blues, if you like, with Amazing Dream getting beaten, but you got your Group 1 success in the Oaks. How satisfying with Better Twist? Yeah, it was very satisfying. You know, um, yeah, she's a great filly, and she always gives 110%. Um, you look, it would have been lovely to be there, but, um, you know, unfortunately we couldn't through COVID and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it was a super night. There was a shifting of the, of the deck chairs driving-wise as well, and... Well, if you're ever going to get a Group 1, you'd love to do it with one of your mates. And Zach Butcher, you've known all your life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's a good bloke and, um, you know, a very good driver. And um, he just showed it once again the other night. Talk me through what it was like watching that race and, and how satisfying for, for you and Amanda. And does it take the monkey off your shoulder, I suppose? I know you're only in your infancy in terms of this role, but um, it must ease the pressure. It does ease the pressure, you know. Um, yeah, it was, it was sort of a bit of a hard watch, you know. Um, everything sort of fell into fell into plan how we wanted to work out and um, you know it's just just she lets them get to her you know and um, that is sort of the hardest part part watching up the straight there but um, we always know she gives that little bit extra every time a horse comes at her. Amazing dream we know there's uh, a bit of travel coming up for her whether it's to Australia and then the States or where it actually ends up. Um, speaking of Australia if you do campaign horses over there, how's that all going to work or have you not got that far yet? Sort of haven't got that far yet, Greg, you know, we're, we're just slowing down like after the jewels, you know, so that's sort of off the radar for a wee bit. So um, we're, we're just something we have to play by ear, you know, um, if we have to send it to a, send, send the horses to another trainer, um, so be it. We'll just, just have to cross that bridge when it comes. And I guess that's the same for Self Assured and Spankham, they're both... Uh, extensively campaigned in Australia in the past. Let's talk about them, both heading towards the free-for-all and then on to the Easter Cup. Yeah, that's right, yeah. They, they've had a wee fresh in. Um, uh, Spank and me went to the water walk in, in Matter Matter after he raced at Cambridge and um, South Assured done the same after his last start here. So um, they both freshened up really well and um, in a real good place at the moment. I know it was a bit frustrating, self-assured, getting beaten, but Pembroke Playboy is frank that form with, a, with an outstanding win over the weekend. Yeah, that's right. He's a lovely horse, and um, yeah, it was no, no disgrace um, running second to him. What about some of the horses that are that have going or gone, if you like? Smooth deal. I mean, and how do you deal with this sort of darling me early on in your campaign? Um, is it just something you take on the chin and move on? I think so. Yeah, there's no point in dwelling on it, Greg. You know, it's it's just one of those things that happen in racing. Um, you just, yeah, just got to cop it and, and carry on, I guess. The staff are such an important part of what was the All Stars and now Cullen Racing and, and, and I know that um, you know, you're hugely appreciative of their support thus far and, and going forward. Yeah, that's all right, Greg, yeah. Um, they put in the hard yards, you know, every day. Um, we had a long day today and everyone sticks there right to the finish and um, yeah, I, I couldn't ask for a better team. Easter Carnival coming up. Pace and Pride, awesome last time, uh, goes this week to the race now called the Ian Dobson uh, Classic. You must be delighted with him. Yeah, wrap with him, yeah. He's, he's a horse that's showing a lot of potential and um, he's just finally putting on the track now. Right, this week as well, you'll have better call me there. Nothing wrong with his performance last time too. Where's Shan Noble at? Uh, he's, he's just trialling up. He's had a trial last week and he'll trial again tomorrow. And um, We're really happy with his work, but um, just thought he'd benefit for one more trial and um, we'll look forward to the Vero next week with him. All right, and you'll be there as well with It's All About Faith. Do you just rule a line through his Woodland Northern Derby run? I think so, Greg. It just, just didn't run to pan for him. You know, he, He's a horse that likes to roll off the gate and um, unfortunately with the Barrier draw, he sort of had to go back and um, just just didn't work out. But um, he's bounced back really well. He's, he's working good at home here, so um, we'll just forget about it and look forward to next week. Well, let's be fair, Hayden. You've been a, a follower of the form and a, and a studier of these great races for such a long time. It was a weird derby. It was, yeah. I've never seen one like that before Greg but um, yeah it's always a fest for something. Luke John that was a bit of a surprise. Yeah look he, he went a great race in the derby um, yeah wrapped, wrapped to have him in the stable too. Tell us about what sort of horses arrived here and uh, I know you had your challenges in the first few days. Yeah we did we just took a few routine blood tests of the horses um, well about 16 or 17 in the team just seeing they're all ramping up and um, his blood didn't come back that good you know it was he had a bit of a viral infection so um, we're treating him up for that and um, hopefully we can get him back on track for, for the various stakes next week. 
Yeah. You're looking forward to regular tyre, who I know is trialling up, uh, coming back to the races, looked a two-year-old with immense ability. How happy are you with him? Uh, very happy with him. Yeah, he's just, just at early stages at the moment, but um, we, we just had to get him gelled. He just got a bit culty uh, when he came in this prep, so it's just set us back three or four weeks, you know. So um, we're really happy how he's working and trotting. So, um, yeah, we'll just hope, hopefully we can get there for the derby with him. And just getting back to the pacing derby as well, first class, not far away? No, he's not. He tried up really good last week. I'm very happy with him. So um, he's a horse that has had a lot of ability too, but he's just had nothing go his way. He's just got crooked last uh, last couple of times in Auckland and, um, you know, he just seems to get him back on track now. The last one I want to touch on, and I know it's been a frustration so far with him, uh, Ultimate Sniper. You got pretty close to getting back to the trials. Uh, there's a lot of fans of this horse. You better give us an update on him. Yeah, he's a lovely horse, Greg. Yeah, we just just about three or four weeks away. We we just just about at the trials, and he just showed a little slight bit of swelling, so we've just backed off on him. You know, just just to look after the horse, and um, he, he's not far away from fast working again now. Gee, that must be hard when when you know what he was able to achieve through that Inter Dominion series and um, unfortunately the family there's a there's a little bit of history there with that as well so you've really got to treat it with uh, with kick gloves don't you? Oh you do yeah like you said he's a fantastic horse um, you sit behind him and you don't drive another one like him you know um, even half it you know he, he's probably almost as good as the best of them. I really appreciate you taking the time out uh, Hayden we wish you all the best in the upcoming carnival congratulations on your success so far. Super thanks a lot Greg. So great to get that insight from uh, Hayden Cullen, Hayden Amanda. Uh, very busy time for them, Michael. Uh, large team of horses, uh, very similar in terms of the way things are operating. The one thing that I, I probably should have asked him was the involvement uh, of Mark Purden and Natalie Rasmus. And he did tell me off camera, Mark pretty much comes down maybe once a week to drive fast work at the moment on a Saturday. He talks to him every two or three days uh, in regards to the, the programs for the horses. But if you actually go back 12 months uh, when Mark and Natalie were on the road as they invariably were with the Grand Circuit. He was doing the work lists and that type of stuff anyway so not a huge amount's changed in that regard but it's certainly a big task. Um, the new set of colours they've got Michael, we'll display those for you now. Officially the royal blue with the white royal blue triangles and the silver grey sleeves. I think they'll stand out quite nicely, thanks very much. And they made their first appearance on Wednesday at Addington Raceway. And not totally dissimilar you know, in shades to the All-Stars colour, so that'll be slightly company for punters. Well, well done, first of all, to Hayden and to Harness Racing New Zealand to coming to the agreement to do that, because they couldn't keep racing in what were Mark Purden's colours. That just wasn't the right thing to do at all. Secondly, it's a big challenge for the young man, and I think he's handling it really well so far. I haven't seen many of their horses drop off the face of the earth type form reversals. And that's really interesting what you said there, off camera about the involvement of Mark Purden because it's so hard to get your head around self-assured, for example, not being trained by Mark Purden. So it's important that punters do get their head around that because they need to be betting into who is actually training these horses and Hayden has shown great maturity to step into that, Greg. But that involvement, Mark being there once a week and, and Natalie, I presume, not being there very often is crucial because I think, Greg, a lot of people keep asking that question. Uh, and it's very, very much Hayden's stable. So we wish him the best of luck with that. And as I said, so far, so good, Greg. I haven't seen much about the stable that made me go, oh, wow, that's lost 10 lengths, because that hasn't been the case. Some of the horses, like a pace and pride, seem to be coming to things now. So maybe it took Hayden a month or two to get his systems right. But they appear to be quite right at the moment, Greg. The, the question and the problem is going to be when he wants to travel. Yeah because horses can't take themselves. No. And he needs to find an outlet in Australia because that's where there's lots of money and the All-Stars have won a lot of money in Australia over the last 10 years. He's gonna to need to find ways of doing that, whether they go to Luke McCarthy or Dean Bro or Nathan Purden, of course, yep. who lives over there. That's gonna be the crucial part, Greg, because there's a lot of good trainers in the country. A lot of them I've seen in the last 10 years have fallen down when they've gone to travel because if the boss goes, the horses at home fade away. And if the horses go without the boss, often that form can be hard to maintain. So that's one of the more crucial questions, but not just for Hayden, Greg, it's a crucial question for everybody. Of course it is. Uh, the Diamond Creek New Zealand Derby is about three weeks away, Michael, and we've got equal favourites in crew, the Northern Derby winner, 
and of course uh, Regazzo Mac who resumes this week uh, both at around three dollars and sixty cents then you're out to pay some pride six or six fifty it's all about faith uh, you're getting around eight dollars for and the likes of Shan Noble and the other one Michael we touched on there with Hayden was Luke John joining his stable I know you'll rap on him yeah, look, I think he's a horse who, who wasn't really buttoned down by his former trainers. They're not trainers who get into their horses too much, Logan and Shane, so there might be some improvement there. He was good enough to run second in the derby. Hard to see him making up enough ground to beat Regazzo, Mac or Krug in the derby. It may even come down to barrier draws, Greg. It's going to be a really interesting derby series to see how they progress through there. But I thought the race this week, the Ian Dobson race, really interesting race, bringing a whole lot of different form lines together. And I think that's interesting, but I do think Regazzo Max probably the best horse in the race this week. And of course, he has the benefit of not having been for the Northern Derby, which was um, punishing to say the least. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, pace and pride. He was excellent winning at Addington Raceway uh, last time. He's come up with a beautiful barrier draw this week, very similar to uh, a couple of weeks ago, Michael. And if he replicates this, he'll take all sorts of beating. Yeah, look, I thought he was just luckless in his first two starts. One was a standing start, which oh, leave me out of three-year-olds in standing start races at Addington because they don't do it, have them often enough to have any sort of great experience at it. Then the next start he got parked out again. That's just what happens when he gets things more his way. I'm still not totally convinced by pacing pride, Greg. I know the ability's there. Maybe he's a late maturing three-year-old. I don't know. Uh, he might be the big mover in this group, but I think Regazzo Mac has far more runs on the board at a higher level than pacing pride so far and he's the horse I'd be favouring this week. Yeah, let's have a look at Regazzo Mac and his performance at the trials recently. Nathan keeping him right up to his work here. Michael Homan, 56-1, 27-5. Forget about the opposition. Have a look at how he stretches out here. I think he'll... Look, he won't be at fever pitch given that the Derby's three weeks away, but uh, as Nathan said in that interview, you cannot turn up at Addington Raceway unless you're pretty close to it or you'll get burned. And, and he doesn't need to be at fever pitch because he's probably better than most of these horses. It just depended on how aggressive he wants to be, whether he wants to go get stuck in and turn it into a staying test or if he sits back and therefore it doesn't become a staying test and that does enable horses to slide home in 55 and change and beat you. Just on the Derby, Greg, um, the loss the latest with Blair Orange, because Blair, I we know he got suspended for a fair bit of time and he appealed it. Will he be back driving in time to, I presume, get back on Krug for the day? Yeah, he uh, had a reduction in his penalty of two weeks and the $1,000 uh, also got reduced. So, um, yeah, he'll be back next week for the Vero, the key lead-up race, of course, uh, for the Derby. So, yes, we'll see the country's leading reinsman uh, back in action next week. So uh, that's interesting from that point of view. Let's move on to the uh, free-for-all uh, for the Trotters. And Midnight Dash has been excellent in his last two. Michael, he came off uh, 35 five metres on this occasion. Uh, we know how smart a four-year-old he is. He's just picked the wrong year, really, because there's plenty of other smarties. I think he's a horse who's going to get better the more he races, Greg. I think at his first start back when he ran fourth about four starts ago, he needed the run, but here he just jogs home in 3.18 and change. I think he's a horse who's going to cop a 10-race campaign, whereas Muscle Mountain, his stable mate, won't cop a 10-race campaign. So he's a horse who's going to turn up in lots of bun fights, and win a lot of money. Um, and yeah, he's better than most of the free-for-all type trotters floating around Canterbury, away from the four-year-olds and of course Sunday Sun, Greg. So yeah, they're gonna have a lot of fun with him, not just this season, but for a couple of seasons. Yeah, they certainly are. Uh, the Harness Jewels market, some of them are out, Michael, in terms uh, uh, of the big day, which would be on June the 6th. And I understand uh, tickets are out publicly uh, on Friday. So uh, well done to David Branch and the team there for getting those out. Uh, the other race I wanted to talk about, Michael, and just at, uh, on Sunday Sun, he trialled yesterday at Rangiora, was winning. They had a, a bit of a weather bomb blow through there, so they only went about 3.32, I think. But spoke to John Dunn last night, said he's very pleased with him. Uh, he'll go to Addington Raceway next week, miss the mile, and then uh, he'll turn up for the trotting championship, the Fred Shaw. So looking forward to seeing him there. Uh, this week, of course, vacation 
Station Hill, another of those four-year-olds that uh, will be going uh, head-to-head with Midnight Dash. Uh, the three-year-old Trotters, Michael, gee, there's some depth amongst these at the moment. Uh, the last start uh, winner, of course, of the Hambletonium uh, was Five Wise Men for Craig Edmonds and uh, John Dunn. Many of these horses are lining up again this week, Michael, although we have some additions. Bit of muscle returns for Paul Nairn, son of Patrick, of course, from the north. Uh, out of this race time, up the hill, loving the port. Uh, Want to play with me, you had a gallop. So, gee, this is some real depth in, the, in this three-year-old crop, I believe. Yeah, I think there's a lot of horses here, Greg, who are going to end up by the end of the season in the mid-70s with their rating. And that that's usually means next season you're going to be an open class horse because you've only got one or two wins before you're stuck there for pretty much for life. He might be the best of them. I'm not entirely sure he's flat out a, a genuine speed type horse who can just get off the gate and rough and tumble and beat these horses. So I wouldn't be taking incredibly short odds about him all the time, Greg. But I thought last year when these two-year-olds crossed over into that two-year-old, three-year-old hybrid season, we had about September, October, I thought there was room there for another horse to come and, and trump them. Not because they weren't any good, they were just even and there wasn't a dominant wow horse in the bunch. Maybe this is the horse, but I, I do think this is a, a, a very complicated time for these horses. They've got to race down there over the next three weeks, then race in the other direction at Alexandra Park, and then stick around for Cambridge, which is a very different sort of racing altogether because it's mile racing on a small track where you have to be on the speed and therefore you have to fly the gate. So I, I think there's a lot of different challenges coming up for this, this crop of horses, Greg, more so than any other crop. Because most of our two-year-old fillies, for example, or three-year-old fillies in the pacing ranks, they're going to race over shorter trips, so the jewels is more or less what they're already doing. But of course, for these horses, they're going to race Derby 26, Sire Stakes 1950, um, Sires in Auckland, 2200, Derby in Auckland, 2700, back to mile racing at Cambridge. I think it's going to be a unique test, Greg, for all their different abilities because so many of this crop are still very new. Yeah, you're not wrong uh, there, Michael. And just out of the trials yesterday, too, uh, the Cullen Racing team had Shan Noble winning uh, first class, one by four lengths. So, um, yeah, there's there's plenty of trial form. You need to get onto HRNZ and have a look at some of those as we build uh, towards this carnival. And on Love in the Port, I spoke to uh, Phil Williamson last night. He said, don't give up on the source. We were disappointed last time. Uh, had a trial, was OK there. Work this week's been great. So uh, he's an expecting a pretty improved performance. In terms of the jewels, uh, Five Wise Men's a favourite there at $4 ahead, a bit of muscle, seven fifty. dollars Lee Stride the same, regular tyre the same, who was scratched out of the trials yesterday. Uh, I see Fire and Want to Play With Me both at $9, so yeah, this is a bit of a moving feast in terms of uh, what's going to happen from the jewels markets there. And there's a free-for-all race at Addington on Friday night, which is a good race again, steal the show off the front. Laver racing really well, Henry Hubert who won last time in AG's White Sox, so uh, good programme there Friday night. The precursor, it's got an almost premier feel to it. Uh, they've ended up with 12 races and 5.04 will be the start time there. Uh, Michael, let's head across the Alps and taken those couple of decent races over the weekend from Westport and Reefton. Uh, the Westport uh, meeting on Friday saw Champagne and Wine, Ricky May driving for Malcolm Shin. Incidentally, if you combine Malcolm and when his brother, it was in Ian's name's uh, number of wins, he's up to 301 wins as a trainer. This one owned by his partner Lisa Daly and Jan Calvert. So a pretty nice win there for Champagne and Wine, win number six in her career. She's done a good job this season, has champagne and wine. And when you watch this race, Greg, and, uh, and the race from Reefton on Sunday, you just get reminded of how important it is to be on the speed, stepping and running at both Westport and Reefton, more so than any of the grass tracks we have in the country. And I've always said grass tracks are on speed tracks, but those two tracks there, whew, once they step and go, Greg, it's so hard to make ground because they're so flat. But Yep, those colours, those shin colours, man, they've been carried by some good horses for a long, long time since I've been involved in harness racing. But 
yeah, hats off to the boys, 301 winners. That's that's a big deal for not a massive training operation. No, exactly, and he's been a big exporter, uh, certainly through the 80s and 90s. Uh, he was almost the dominant force in terms of uh, selling his juveniles. Let's go to the Sunday, which wrapped up the Team Teal scenario too, and we'll get to that later on. And Gail Force, who was close up at the Kawateri Cup, took out the Anangahua Grey Valley Cup, win number four from start 12, and a very good weekend for Stephen McRae. A good weekend for Stephen McRae, a very tight victory and possibly the worst finishing post angle in New Zealand. I love Reefton, it's one of my favourite little towns, it's a lot of fun but it's just a shocker. For the, for the, that, that, that picture there is fine, the actual coverage Greg, it's just Well comical. let's be fair, if you backed Gale Force Michael, you were thinking to yourself, uh, there's no chance I've got the money here but uh, even Craig Thornley's a little bit perplexed as he came back but the big smile will appear as it invariably does and, uh, and there it goes. Uh, and he's a big part of course of uh, the Stephen McRae Sprayed and Lodge uh, set up as uh, Craig Thornley and uh, that horse has done a pretty good job at uh, Gale Force. So, a couple of big days over there on the coast. Just, just on that, Greg, people, people look at those angles and go, well, how can it possibly be that bad? Well, mm. here's the reason. When these tracks were built, yep. there was no television. No. So people weren't thinking, we'll put the grandstand here, and, and you're not going to go rig up you know, a whole lot of scaffolding just to put the, the grandstand cameras there. So unfortunately, the, the post is there, grandstand's here, the cameras have to be in the grandstand. It just makes for tricky. It doesn't change anybody's life, but just in case people wonder how that happens, it's for that simple reason that the Reefton grandstands probably be standing there for about 80 years. Yeah, very good uh, explanation there, Michael. All right, we're about to take a short break here on your box seat. When we come back, we'll nip across the Tasman and uh, check out where you can go harness racing around New Zealand this week. Well and truly in your home straight in your box seat, let's snip across the Tasman with Garrards and of course big news that Tim Butt has uh, left this place, Menangle, and heading to Melton to continue uh, his career. But here's Cash and Flow, Michael winning the King of Swing Miracle Mile uh, pace in 151.4, win 33 for him. A double whammy for Brick and Farms too, of course they bred Cash and Flow and they bred King of Swing so he wins the race named after his breeding barn mate and they made a mistake taking this horse to the Victoria Cup. He didn't cop Victoria or the 2,200 metres around Melton. Uh, he's far better at Menangle. Probably not a top liner these days, but he'll probably win about 10 races at Menangle doing exactly what he did last week. Really. Yeah, amazing stuff from him. Uh, City of Melton plate this week with Wolf Stride off the back of his big uh, run in the Miracle Mile and the Scotch Notch with Tornado Valley Mc McLovin. So they were a couple of the big races across the Tasman. What about for us this week? Oh, Waikato Bay of Plenty Harness. Uh, they're underway 5.04 Thursday night. Nine race card there. Addington, of course, with their 12 at 5.04. Very good programme there. Winton, 10 races there, 12.03, including the Winton uh, Businesses Cup uh, with Pen Brook Playboy in it and Monocarara race on uh, Sunday. They've got 11 starting just after 12 o'clock. TAB uh, hits and misses for this week. Here's a summation of those. Some good money won on in Westport. 4000 at $2 there on Donegal Carrick Finn getting back into winning form and a few misses there too. Dark Horse uh, getting beaten at uh, 2500 there at $1.75. Uh, Unfortunately, that came unstuck when one Apollo began that quickly and 599 driving wins for Gerard O'Reilly. Uh, wonderful effort there and uh, he's about to hit that milestone and we know he'll do that uh, in short time, uh, one would imagine. Uh, here's some of the bigger bets coming through. Uh, Regazzo Mac uh, now into $3.60. Luke John having joined the Cullen Racing Team. Mexicana with good support there now into $15 in the New Zealand Trotting Derby. Can go off the back of his very good run into eight fifty in the Dawson Halfford and Partners New Zealand Messenger. And Shut Up and Dance, who's been awesome for Regan Todd. Uh, the Jules Diamond there now into $6, $600 uh, placed on that. Michael Guerin's holding up his end in terms of the best bets again, Michael. Uh, and you're going to the Waikato this week? Yeah, I am. Tony Hurley, he's got a really nice filly starting back. She's resuming for a campaign race three, number three, 
on Thursday night. Greg thought it would be winning, so yep, might be a big price, but you should get around the $2 mark, and uh, he has trialled really well the last two weeks. Last trial was excellent last week at Booker yeah. Mia Regaza, that is. I'm with Regazzo, Mac. I'm sticking uh, uh, pretty tight there as well, but I need to find a winner, Michael, it would be fair to say, uh, with uh, our team there. All right, uh, let's have a look at Team Teal, and uh, Sam Otley took the uh, title there with her 16 wins with Sarah O'Reilly. Uh, look, that $25,000 raised, uh, speaking with uh, Courtney Buchanan from HRNZ, they're expecting that to get closer to 40. There's been a huge number of uh, contributors as well. Um, so a massive thank you to all of those and, uh, and a big effort by HRNZ, ovarian cancer as we know. Uh, it is it's important to do more research and find out more about it and therefore the Team at Teal uh, promotion with all of these people getting involved and supporting it, uh, we do as we say expect it to get to about 40,000. Uh, once things are all settled we'll give you that figure. Uh, next uh, next week on next week's show. It was uh, the Rural Games, the Ford Ranger Rural Games over the weekend. I was lucky enough to be there again. Uh, they have a gear up competition, Michael, which um, I didn't go into the actual comp, but I had to show 700 winning trainer uh, Doug Gale, you see there, Auckland Cup winning trainer, of course, with Kate's first, that I was capable of doing it. It took me a lot longer than it did uh, for Penny Boyle, who works for... Uh, the Michael House team. That was Shannon Redstool. She took out the uh, speed gear it up. Uh, she was the co-host from TV3, having a stare around with the kids' carts. And just on that, uh, Denise and Murray Goldsworthy got an award at the uh, Norwood Rural uh, Sports Awards for their contribution to rural sports. So uh, congratulations to them too. Uh, very important to have those things, Michael, at things like shows and, and rural games uh, to spread the, the word about harness racing. Yeah, and also be involved in your community, Greg. You know, you can't expect people to be gambling and you can have a licence to race if you're not going to involve yourself in the community. And that's where Team Teal's imported. Over a quarter of a million dollars raised Australasian-wide by all the young ladies and their supporters of Team Teal. So well done to Harness Racing New Zealand and Courtney and everybody involved for being part of that. And to the Goldsworthies, it's a big job what they've helped do in the north, along with the Phillips family who helped set up the kids' carts and the amateur driver side. Phillips are the amateur drivers in with the kids' carts. Yep. That's brought two separate groups of people into harness racing and given racing and given them a reason to uh, to be part of the industry. So to the Goldsworthies, congratulations on your award at the Rural Games over the last weekend. Yeah, and a big thank you to uh, Sports Inc. And uh, that will play out on TV3. I think it's the 27th of this month, about uh, 5 p.m. Uh, here's a pick that will warm uh, people's hearts. The old bloke, Christian Cullen. What a magnificent racehorse he was. Michael, a super sire. He won 22 races, including 14 straight at one stage and all of those Group 1 races. And he's looking pretty good, the old bloke. Remarkable. He, he's always been one of the best-looking standard bridge you'd ever see, but you just don't expect him to look that good when they're 27 years old. So he's obviously been well looked after, as Gregory he deserves to be. Yep, absolutely he does, uh, Michael. If you're looking to go into the Breeders' Oaks, uh, nominations for those with Addington Raceway closed at the end of the month. Michael, that's been our show for this week. Looking forward to Addington on Friday night. We'll wrap it all up next week and build towards the premiere at Addington Raceway. Thanks for your contribution. Mate, great work getting Nathan and Hayden. Really interesting to find out where they're at in their careers and what they're expecting to do next. Looking forward to the show next week as Addington becomes the epicentre of the harness racing world. Yeah.